Today, even though this is the beginning of spring, I want to talk about a disease that affects many Americans, and that's called depression. Because about 8% of Americans have depression. And anybody who's had depression say, it's a miserable disease. You know, your whole life is gray. And yet, how do we treat that? Mm -hmm. So what's really the underlying cause of depression and the treatment at this particular point in time? Well, the, the short answer is nobody really knows. Uh, the easy answer was saying, ah, it's something that can be a druggable tar target. We say, ah, we know the serotonin seems to be important. And we, the levels of serotonin might be low. So if we basically just use drugs that prevent the uptake of serotonin by the nerves, we should get better treatment of depression. A couple of problems with this. One, it takes a long time using drugs like Prozac to see any alleviation. If it was that simple, it should happen very quickly. Two, about 40% of people basically are Prozac deficient. It simply doesn't work, which means something else is probably going on. So the most likely candidate would be our old friend, Mr. Inflammation. So what exactly is the role of inflammation and depression? The primary thing of inflammation, it basically disrupts neural transmission. So again, it's not just a matter of not having enough serotonin, but it's basically saying, I have to make sure the neural transmission is also working. So we do know a couple of things that drugs such as interferon, when applied to people, about 40% of the people who get interferon treatments develop severe depression. And what does interferon do? It increases the levels of cytokines. These are inflammatory mediators that basically will not be addressed by uh, Prozac, but basically can be addressed by an anti-inflammatory diet. And that's what gave rise to the first aspects. Could a combination, a combination of drugs to increase serotonin and now dietary products, primarily fish oils and a lot of fish oils, intriguing aspect. So using the combination of diet with these medications can kind of help to uh, alleviate some of the side effects from these particular drugs. Well, exactly. And the, the first studies were done at Harvard Medical School back in 1999. Uh, what they were doing with a very specialized group of uh, bi uh, bipolar depression patients, which are probably the most difficult to treat. And <clears throat> they took this uh, the, the bipolar depression patients, split them in two groups. One got a placebo and the other got 10 grams of omega-3 fatty acids per day. And after about three months, they had to stop the study. The data was so strongly in favor of those who are taking their drugs and the fish oil that it became uh, unethical to continue it. The second reason they had to stop the study, they ran out of fish oil. The fish oil they were using was a specialized uh, uh, type being made by the National Laboratory uh, in uh, Bethesda. And they had used up all their samples, so they had to stop the study. But it was a first demonstration that high-dose fish oil, not talking about one capsule a day or two, this is probably close to about 15, 16 capsules per day, could have a significant effect on depression. Okay, the, the field went kind of, you know, so-so for about 13 years until you and I published our data on basically a dose response curve with children with major a childhood depression. And <clears throat> we had two groups, um, all had uh, depression. They're taking their, their antidepressive drugs. But one group, we gave two and a half grams of omega-3 fatty acids. The other group, we gave 15 grams, about seven times more, and say, okay, what happens? Well, what happens was the group that got the higher levels of the omega-3 fatty acids had a dramatic improvement in terms of their depression. Those who got the lower dose, they were getting a little better, but it was not statistically significant, which says there was a definite, you know, uh, curve in terms of dose response. Going back to the uh, data initially at Harvard, that the high levels, again, 10 grams is a very high level, uh, is basically probably a therapeutic dose. And this was confirmed by new studies from Harvard, published only last year, showing, again, a dose-response effect in terms of the levels of the omega-3 fatty acids. But more importantly, it was basically they showed even a stronger effect on the resolvents. These are the hormones that basically the omega-3 fatty acids generate, and they are the most powerful drugs known in the medical science, or most powerful hormones, that turn 
off inflammation. Mm -hmm. So now we can look back and say, okay, what causes inflammation? We really don't know. Uh, but we do know that drugs such as Prozac that increase serotonin levels, they will help, but they can be made dramatically more effective with high dose fish oil. Well, let's be frank. Are most people going to take 10 grams of fish oil a day? No. No, I do, but nobody <laughs> else will. But the, but the fact is, this is the power of metabolic engineering. The more you combine the zone diet with omega-3 fatty acids and the polyphenols, what you're doing is basically developing now a systems approach to reduce inflammation, including in the brain. So by using now the systems approach, you can basically use lower levels, lower levels of omega-3 fatty acids to make the existing drugs work better. And that's the power of metabolic engineering. It's not a drug, but it's a very highly defined dietary system that makes drugs work better at lower concentrations. Drugs don't solve the problem of disease. They only treat the symptoms. Metabolic engineering makes those drugs work better. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have depression, probably your best way to make sure you don't get depression is to follow metabolic engineering in the first place. Oh, and there's also two other benefits. One, you lose excess body fat. And two, you slow down the aging process. Hey, not not a bad problem <laughs> with, with being, being happy. So again, uh, this is the aspect as we basically delve into chronic disease states, especially ones which really have no good markers other than how do you feel, that basically metabolic engineering will have its play in terms of a powerful tool to basically restructure healthcare as we know it in the 21st century. And Dr. Sears, one thing I also want to point out from our studies is that the majority of the population is deficient in omega-3. So it's likely that anyone that's listening right now, unless you're, you're currently supplementing, is not getting enough omega-3s in the diet. So that's also another, most of us are starting low to begin with. So if we have a propensity to, you know, have in our genetic line some of these conditions and stuff, it's really good to, to be supplementing or ensuring that we're getting the right amount. And a, a good starting point saying, what's the right amount if I don't have a chronic disease? Well, your grandmother knew when she gave of, uh, gave your parents a tablespoon of cod liver oil before they could leave the house. Now, that contains about two and a half grams of omega-3 fatty acids. It's a good dose, but not enough to treat uh, depression. But the average American takes in about 125 milligrams, a 95% reduction. And that, in my opinion, is the reason why we have more and more neurological uh, disorders arising because basically our brains are starving for omega-3 fatty acids. Mm -hmm. So, well, thanks, Dr. Sears, for enlightening us. And, you know, I think it always shows the benefit of having the appropriate diet to begin with. But even if you are presented with one of these conditions, how these can help your medications be more effective or how you can do things in combination with a healthy diet. So a lot of options for people. And don't forget the losing the excess body fat and basically slowing down aging. Yeah, right? What's not to love? So, well, thank you so much for your time. And if people want to learn more about metabolic engineering, where should they go? They should go to drsears.com. This is really the science site of understanding about the zone. The zone is a complex uh, format, basically, that uh, understands how we can basically reprogram our metabolism. And by reprogram our metabolism, we can live a longer and better life. Excellent. Well, thanks for your time today, Dr. Sears. Always a pleasure. Thank you. For more on this subject and many other topics on the science of wellness, go to drsears.com.